Hey friends, it is Jenna, what is up, and welcome back to the Board Game Garden, and welcome to the first of a few different videos that I'm going to be doing for my like 2023, best of 2023, best of last year videos. So this one is the first one. I'm going to be doing this one, which is uh, best light board games. So these are going to be card games, party games, just lighter complexity board games that I have played with friends and family. Um, and then I wanted to do a separate one on heavier, um, more complex games. So I'm going to be doing a top 10 uh, heavy games of 2023. And these will be games that were released in 2023. Um, I will be doing one that is going to be my top solo games of 2023, which those ones are not going to be only 2023 releases. Those are just going to be my favorite games that I played solo in the year of 2023. And then I kind of want to do one where it's like my favorite games that I just played in 2023. Please let me know if you guys want me to do that. Um, I know a lot of other content creators have started kind of separating them because I played a lot of games in 2023 and a lot of them weren't even uh, 2023 releases. So I would love to talk about those ones as well. So let me know down in the comments if you guys want to see that. And then was there any other ones that I wanted to do? I think that might be it. Um, there is one video that I'm going to be doing just for Patreons, which if you guys do not know, I do have a Board Game Garden Patreon. You can go over there and check it out. I always have it linked down below in the description box. Definitely go check that out because I will be doing a Patreon only video of ranking, tier ranking every single game that I played in 2023, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. So yeah. Anyways, without further ado, we're going to get into this video. I don't want it to be crazy long, so I will be going through these uh, pretty quickly. So if you do want like to know more information about all of these games, I will have the BGG links to all of them down below. Um, so you can go and check them out there. But all of these are 2023 releases, lighter complexity games. Basically, I cut it off at the two um, mark. So on BGG, Board Game Geek, um, you can have games ranking from zero to five in weight or complexity. So I cut it off at that two mark. So everything here is two or less. Um, so yeah, without further ado, if you guys want to see all of my lighter games, my top 10 lighter games that were released in 2023, then just keep on watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy. Also hit that subscribe button down below if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. Comment down below what some of your favorite 2023 lighter game releases were. And let's get into this video, shall we? All right, so first getting into a few honorable mentions. These ones are ones that I didn't want to include in the top 10 for various reasons. So the first one is actually pretty exciting because this includes a giveaway. So the game that I wanted to talk about is Trio, which I do know that Trio technically was a 2023 release, but this is the same game as a Japanese game called Nana, which a huge thank you to shout out Ryan, Carrie, you guys are awesome. They did gift me a copy of Nana at Level Up, so I have Nana now. I have Trio. Um, these are basically the same game, they just have slightly different art. Um, but I was actually reached out to by Happy Camper Games and they do want to uh, do a little giveaway for a copy of Trio. So if you guys want to win a copy of Trio, just simply down in the comment sections, comment something that includes Trio. So the word Trio must be in your comment somewhere and then I will randomly pick someone to win a copy of Trio from Happy Camper Games. So a huge, huge thank you to Happy Camper for doing this giveaway. Good luck to everyone. Um, this will be a global or international giveaway, so uh, definitely go and enter down in the comments. Um, but yeah, I wanted to quickly talk about Trio because Trio was definitely, um, when I did this ranking, it was number one it was 100% number one, but then I was like, no, that doesn't, it's not, it's not fair because technically it is Nana and Nana was definitely not released in 2023. Um, so yes, I decided to just make it an honorable mention and have a little fun giveaway at the beginning of this video. So um, yeah, Trio is a fantastic, almost like go fish for hobby gamers kind of game where basically you were trying to be the first person to find three sets, so a trio of sets of three. So there are three of every single number from one to 12, and you are trying to be the first one with three sets 
or this is where it kind of gets like slightly complicated. You can get two sets if you're the first person with two sets that add or subtract to seven because in the original game of Nana, I believe Nana means seven or seven, seven. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, but yes, you are wanting to add or subtract to seven or if you are the person that uh, gets the set of sevens, you also win. Um, but it's this very interesting game where on your turn, you're asking the people around the table um, to reveal either their highest number or their lowest number, or you can actually flip over a number in the center of the table. So it's almost like you are like trying to fish for these different numbers, trying to remember where these numbers are, and then ultimately trying to get those uh, sets. So yeah, that is Trio, a fantastic game that we have played so many times on top of Nana. We've played both of these many, many times. Um, so yes, that was the first honorable mention. Again, good luck to everybody with the little giveaway there. Um, comment down below with the word trio in your comment and you will be entered in to win that. Another game that I quickly wanted to mention that I did not include in my top 10 is a little card game that I was recently introduced to. Uh, that is FTW or For the Win. This is a Friedman Freeze release. You can obviously tell by the green color, um, but this is a card shedding game that I find to be very, very satisfying and very fun. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I've only played it a few times thus far, so that's why I didn't want to include it in this list. I feel like all of the games that I am uh, sharing with you guys right now, I've probably played a solid like three to ten times. So the minimum that I wanted to play a game would be three times um, in order to include it in the list. Um, but this one I think I've played twice so far and I've really enjoyed it. It's this fun shedding game where you have your hand of cards and you are playing down cards um, in ascending order. So you always have to play a card higher than the person that played before. Um, you can also decide to take a card from your hand and place it in front of you for a later turn where then you can uh, put one of the cards from your hand with the one in front of you, add those together and place them in the middle. So it kind of adds up to a higher number. Ultimately, you are trying to be the first person with one card left in your hand and that one card is positive points and then everybody else at the table um, they get one card which is their highest card that is positive points and then every other card in their hand is negative points so it's a very fun puzzle of trying to figure out how to play down these cards put some in front of you um, when you do put them in front of you you do have to take a card from the pile in the center and then that pile is discarded and then you can start a new pile so super cool puzzle I really enjoy this card game Definitely recommend if you can find a copy of it. It's quick, easy to learn, um, fun to play. Um, but I didn't want to, like I said, include it on the list because I've only played it twice. So that is for the win. And then lastly, we have this game right here, which I didn't want to include this game on the list. I've been freaking loving this game, but technically I don't think it has been quite released yet in uh, like North America. Um, but that game is Far Away. So Far Away is now being distributed or published by uh, Pandasaurus Games, which is awesome. Um, and I was gifted this copy, so a huge thank you to Pandasaurus. Um, but Far Away is this fantastic card drafting, um, little tableau building game that just ruins my brain, but in the best way ever, because you are playing down cards, eight cards in a row. And yes, that might seem very simple, but when you go to score that line of cards, you are actually going from uh, right to left and you are flipping one card at a time. So that far right card only has that one card in order to be able to score things. So you're not going to be able to get like different icons that are printed on those cards. Um, the You do have some other cards up at the top, which are called sanctuary cards. It's a little bit of a hard game to describe, but it is just so fantastic. And then as you flip over those cards, you're going to get more and more of those icons and be able to score more and more of the objectives on all of the other cards. Um, and I just think it is so, so fun. I will say it is on BG. So I definitely recommend going and checking it out and then Pandasaurus Games will be releasing it very soon I believe they have it on pre-order right now, um, but they will be releasing it soon uh, To retail which is very exciting. Um, but yes, that is far away I wanted to quickly mention that one um, and those were the honorable mentions for the list 
uh, let's quickly get into this top 10, shall we? All right, so starting off with number 10. This is a game that I've played both multiplayer and solo and have been loving. It is on the top 10, it is number 10, so it's obviously lower than the rest of them, but this still is a very good game. I think in total, I probably had a solid like 40 games, 40 that um, kind of went into this ranking um, of games that were like a two and less, um, very like light games. So this being 10 still out of 40, all of these uh, really deserve their spot. But that is Yakmok the Winter Market, which this is published by WizKids and it was sent to me by WizKids, so a huge thank you to them. But Yakmok the Winter Market is such a cozy game. This is the one that I focused a lot on in January. If you guys do not know, the Board Game Garden has a like solo focus uh, prompt each month. Um, I will be doing a new one every single month. This month of uh, February, the word is adore. Um, in January, the word was warmth. And I picked Yakmok because it was a very just like cozy game to me. It's all about a winter market. It's a fairly easy just card drafting tableau building game where you are going around this almost rondelle and it has that really cool mechanism where the person that's in last place goes first and you can go as far forward as you want but obviously the further you get forward the longer it's going to be until you are the last player again and you can go again but basically you're moving one of your two meeples up to a card you're going to be drafting that card or taking that card putting it into your tableau but the fun thing about this one is that there are a ton of different cards that you can put into the game. So there's a bunch of different types of cards that are going to be scoring in different ways. You're going to be doing some set collection. You're going to be doing some like tableau building. There's like this patchwork one that allows you to actually do this little puzzle of connecting different colors and creating this patch, um, patchwork quilt thing. So there's a bunch of different cards that you can kind of um, decide to use each game. So each game is going to be different. Um, and I've really enjoyed this both multiplayer and solo. So that is why Yuckmok the Winter Market is my number 10 uh, 2023 release. Um, yeah, that's that. Cozy game. Moving on to number nine. This is a polyomino game. And honestly, when I first saw and read the rules for this, I'm like, this is a very simple game, but honestly, it's a very fun game. Again, I've played this both solo and multiplayer, and that is a game called Junk Drawer, which just being a fan of like organization, and I've actually recently downloaded a game on my Switch called A Little to the Left, and this board game almost reminds me of that. Um, where basically you are just like organizing things within a drawer and it is just so satisfying. They, all of the different items are uh, little polyomino shapes and basically each round um, you're going to have a bunch of different, I think it's four cards because there's four different sections of the drawer. Um, each round you're going to have four cards. You're going to flip over one card. That's going to be uh, one of the items. And if you're playing a multiplayer game, every player has the same set of polyomino tiles. So when you flip over that card, you see that specific item. Everyone's going to grab that same item and then place it in one of the four sections of the drawer. And each of the four sections of the drawers is going to have some sort of objective. So the way you want to place those specific objects. And then you're going to flip over the next card. You're going to have to place that item them then in a different drawer than the other one. The next card you'll have to place in a different drawer and then the, or different section of the drawer, sorry. And then the last card that you flip, the fourth card, you have to place in the section of the drawer that you haven't placed anything in yet. And you'd move on to the next round. You would continue this until one player could not place one of the tiles. And then you would score those four individual um, sections of the drawer's objectives. And that is simply the game. So I think it is a really good balance of being very, simple rule set but great gameplay and again the theme of organization just gets me um, so I really enjoy this one this is published by 25th Century Games and I will say that this was sent to me for review as well so a huge thank you to 25th Century Games for sending this over and I was pleasantly surprised by junk drawers so uh, that is why it is my number nine moving on to number eight this is a wonderful game. Again, one that I've played both solo and multiplayer. 
and this theme just makes me so happy and just this game in general makes me so happy uh, but my number eight is forever home so this is published by birdwood games this was sent to me for review so thank you to birdwood games um, but this plays one to five players and it is just a very puzzly game so in the same realm of cascadia and azul and calico and different things like that you're going to be drafting um, a card or a tile and you're going to be placing those dog tiles onto uh, this grid so I think it's like a I forget how many squares a five by five square um, or like grid and you're going to be placing these dogs onto one of those squares and you're going to be trying to create these different patterns that are going to be on these cards that you would have drafted as well. Once you have created a specific pattern with you know specific placements of those dogs and specific colors of those dogs, um, you're going to be able to score that card and then it tells you on that card how many of those uh, dogs you can rehome. So you're going to be taking whatever ones you want and then you're going to be placing them into one uh, of four different places that you can rehome them. I believe there is the a foster home, suburbs, city, and countryside. I think those are the four. And each game that you play, you can actually use different cards. So each of those four categories are going to score different colored dogs in different ways. Um, and I just really enjoy that puzzle. I'm a huge fan of Calico, Cascadia, Azul, all of those different just puzzly games. And this one really offers that with an amazing, amazing theme. Um, so I've enjoyed it so far. I will also say that this one has recently been added to BGA as well. So I definitely recommend checking it out on BGA. You can play the solo mode on BGA. So I've been playing that a ton over there, but there's nothing like the physical, uh, like drafting of the things and putting them on the board. I just absolutely love it. So that is why Forever Home is my number eight. Moving into my number seven, this is a game that I have only played three times. So this is the one that I've probably played the least out of all of these games, but I had to include this game, guys. I do think that if I've had more plays of this game, this would have been a lot higher. But the game that I'm talking about is Coffee Rush. So Coffee Rush is a game by Korea Board Games, and this was actually gifted to me by my wonderful friend Steph. So huge shout out to Steph, because you found a game that I absolutely love. I'm sure you can tell that it is a game for me because it is a coffee themed game. And you guys, if you've seen the channel before, know how much I love my coffee. But anyways, Coffee Rush is a, it's hard to explain. It's kind of just like a resource collection. Uh, order fulfillment makes sense for like a coffee store or like cafe game, um, order fulfillment game, but there's this kind of element of that rush that trying to, uh, you know, fulfill orders as fast as you possibly can in the rush of working at a cafe. So you're going to be uh, moving your little meeple around this board um, and the spots that you go to are going to allow you to collect certain ingredients and those ingredients you're going to be putting into these three little cups which are the cutest things in the entire world um, and all the different ingredients are also amazing there's like ice cubes and coffee beans and uh, caramel and chocolate and all of these things i absolutely love it um, but you're going to be putting these ingredients into these cups you only have three cups so you really have to manage what coffee orders you are working on in these three cups and then once you have finished one of those orders you're going to pour out that cup put the resources back and then that's going to be an order that you've successfully fulfilled. But at the end of every turn that you take, all of your orders are going to be shifted down one. And as they get lower and lower, they get closer to you know needing to be completed. And if you are not able to complete them by the time it gets to the bottom, they do get discarded. Those customers are angry. So it's going to go into a minus point pile. And then also a fun thing is that once you have gotten three successful orders, every uh, successful order is a positive point. Every uh, unsuccessful order is a negative point. But you can at one point, if you have three successful order cards, you can discard those, flip over one of these special abilities that you can use, which are very powerful special abilities that are pretty much going to get you double 
uh, ingredients in some cases. Um, one of them is allowing you to move diagonally, which is really awesome, but those will be pretty strong and allow you to collect more ingredients and ultimately fulfill more orders on future turns. So um, each of those special abilities as well, once you flip them, they get you two victory points. So you're giving up three victories to flip over a special tile, you get two victory points. So you're really only spending one of your victory points in order to get some sort of a really special, um, helpful ability for uh, future rounds. So I really enjoyed this one. This was actually one of my like biggest surprises of BoatCon when we did that in January. So uh, yeah, absolutely love uh, Coffee Rush. I'm super excited to play it more, uh, but that is why it is my number seven. Moving on to number six. This is a adorable game. I freaking love the art in this game. It is a mushroom game, um, but that game is do 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 do. Mycelia. So Mycelia was a game that was sent to me by Ravensburger, so a huge thank you to them. Um, this is a game that can be played one to four players. I've played it solo, I've also played it multiplayer, and it is a wonderful, wonderful game. It is a pretty simple kind of intro to deck building, but the really cool element of it is that you're not only deck building, but you're also moving these little dewdrops around this board, which I freaking again love the puzzle of doing there's something about like little puzzles in a game that just gets me um so basically you are on your turn um getting three cards in your hand and you're going to be using those cards in different ways some cards are going to allow you to move dewdrops from one type of terrain to another some of them are going to give you more spending power in order for you to purchase more cards from the market a very basic uh deck building mechanism you have that market you're going to be uh, getting more cards into your deck so that once you are, um, you know, picking up those cards, you can do stronger and stronger abilities. And ultimately, you are trying to be the person to uh, get all of your dewdrops off of your board. And the way to do that is obviously you're moving those dewdrops, but there is one space on your board, which you can get multiple of these spaces with other cards, but there's one spot that's printed on your board that is a little like portal. You are trying to ultimately get those. Uh, little dew drops to that portal. Once you get it to that portal spot, it'll uh, go over to this little shrine. Once the shrine has been filled, you actually like spin it and all of the dew drops like fall out very beautifully. Um, and then there's also a die and then that die will show you where you have to add a few more dew drops to. So that's kind of a little bit of a like you think you're close to being done, but we're gonna add a few more, and you're just trying to be the first one to get all of the dew drops off the board um, to be the winner. So there's a little bit of a race element as well, which I love, um, and it just gives this really cool spin to deck building with still making it a pretty simple game to teach and play, and I've really, really enjoyed it. So that is my Celia. That is my number six. All right, so moving into the top five. It's kind of funny because the boxes are slowly going to be getting smaller, which is interesting. Um, but the next one, my number five, is a game that I actually have only played multiplayer, which I'm surprised because apparently there are some great solo modes in this game and multiple great solo modes in this game, so I really need to get on it uh, with playing this one solo. Maybe I will do a solo live stream of this one, but my number five is Trailblazers. So Trailblazers was sent to me by Bitewing Games, I believe. Yes, Bitewing Games, and Trailblazers is a closed drafting, so you are um, taking a hand of cards. The cards are very interesting shaped because they're like long rectangles, um, but each of them have some like different colored paths on them. You're going to be choosing two of those and then passing the rest to the person either on your left or your right. You're gonna be placing down those two paths onto your little tableau. Um, the one thing about this game is that I'm really bad at it, I will say, but I still do really enjoy the puzzle of it. It is like a route building game, which I have discovered that I'm just really bad at and my brain just like can't comprehend creating paths and like following paths. I don't know what it is, but I've loved this game every single time I've played it. Um, despite that. So uh, yeah, you're taking those two, you're adding it to your tableau. You have three different types of paths that you're ultimately trying to create as many completed loops, starting from that like base camp kind of thing, kind of card, um, and then finishing at that base camp card. So there's going to be 
a walking path, a biking path, and a boating path. And you're going to be adding these to your tableau one round at a time. So you're gonna be choosing um, one to start with, you're gonna add another one, and then you're going to add another one. Um, and you're ultimately, like I said, uh, trying to create these different paths. There's also some uh, like public objectives that you're going for as well. And I've just really enjoyed the puzzle of this one. The production of it is fantastic. The also nice thing about this one is that it does play up to eight players which is really good and it doesn't even take any longer because it is a fully simultaneous game for the most part. The only thing that's not is like maybe some scoring and then obviously with closed drafting games, there's sometimes people that take a little bit longer than others, which I've never really had an issue with. So that is my number five. That is Trailblazers, a wonderful game. There's also like a travel version of this too, which I think is cool. And there's also in this, I don't know if you can hear all that jiggling, uh, there's also a animal expansion in here that I've played with once or twice, uh, which is a lot of fun as well. And there's also like a campfire type expansion and another one. There's quite a bit in this, in this box. So uh, yeah, that is my number five. Moving on to my number four. This is when the boxes are starting to get a little bit smaller. Um, but number four is a game from KTPG, which is Kids Table Board Games. I did purchase this one myself from, I think it was PAX Unplugged? Yeah, it was definitely PAX Unplugged. Diced veggies I had wanted ever since I uh, saw it. Uh, a bunch of people were talking about it and I just loved the look of it. Uh, if you do not know, I'm a huge fan of games that use dice in interesting ways. And in Diced Veggies, it uses dice in a very cool way that I've never seen before. Basically, you have this little like square thing that you're going to be rolling all these dice into. Um, it's going to make it so all the dice line up really nicely in this kind of square uh, formation. I don't know how many dice are in it, but it's like a five by something uh, big flat thing of dice, basically. Um, and all of the dice pips are going to be different, obviously, uh, due to just rolling them into there. And all of the different dice are going to be some different um, colors, which represent the different types of ingredients that you're going to need for your recipe cards. So everyone's going to have some recipe cards in front of them, and they are going to require certain dice uh, colors in order to fulfill them. Also, you have these other cards. I forget what they're called but some of them are going to be like you get additional points for doing some specific thing with these dice. So basically on your turn, you're going to be taking this little cleaver knife thing and you're going to be chopping off a section of the dice, which I think is so fun. But the section of the dice that you cut off, the pips can only equal up to 10. So you have to count out the pips of the dice that you are breaking off. And if it's 10 or less, you get to take those add them to your different recipes, and then once you've had a recipe completed, you can take all those dice off, and then you score victory points based off of that recipe. It's a very simple game, but again, I just absolutely loved it. And just, I'm a fan of food-themed games, and it's an easy one to teach, an easy one to get to the table. Unfortunately, there's no solo mode, but I've, I've, I've been fine with that. Uh, I really enjoyed it multiplayer, but yes, that is Diced Veggies my number four. Moving on to number three, this is actually, I think, the only roll and write of this list. It's actually, it's technically a flip and roll and shape right, um, but anyways, it's a very interesting one and one that I've been obsessed with. There's something about this game that I just absolutely love, um, but that is Mind Space. So this is a very small, box, which I absolutely love. That means that this can go so many places with me. I've played this multiplayer, I've played it solo, um, and it is from All Play. And I do believe this one was sent to me for review, so a huge thank you to All Play for that. But Mind Space was one that I saw. I love the theme of this one, where it's kind of filling in the brain with different like memories and feelings and stuff like that, which I think is very cool. Um, again, I love the look of it, the kind of like sketchy um, art of it. But in the game, you're going to have a line of cards that have different polyomino shapes on them. 
uh, you're going to have a line of six, so from one to six, you're going to roll these different colored dice, and then whatever those uh, dice roll to, you're going to place those numbers by the coordinating cards. Each of those dice are going to be a different color, and then on your turn, you're going to be choosing one of the dice with the connected card, and you're going to draw that polyomino shape from the card in the color that the dice was, or the die was. And you're going to be putting that into the brain anywhere you want. The brain is uh, divvied up into like five different sections and you cannot have any of the same colors touching so you're always trying to have different colors surrounded by different colors and each of the different colors are going to score in a different way um, you also are going to get points for completing the different sections of the brain and there's also some like public objectives so once you have completed one of those objectives if you're the first one it gets flipped over and then everyone else gets Less victory points, very similar to uh, like Welcome to Your Perfect Home also has that. Um, but yeah, there's just something about this game. I think it's just like so easy to take anywhere, to teach, to get to the table. I think it's just absolutely amazing. I love Roll and Writes. And this one was a huge hit for me in 2023. So that is why Mindspace is my number three. Moving into the top two. These two games could not be any different, but I absolutely love it. My number two is a very chaotic, easy, simple game, but there is something about this game. This is probably the game that I've played most out of every single game that I've talked about today. Um, and it has just created so many amazing moments and laughs and memories for me and my family and my friends. And that game, I actually do not have the physical copy with me today because my parents loved it so much that they asked to borrow it uh, for their vacation. So they took it on vacation with them to Mexico. Anyways, this right here is That's Not A Hat. And you have to say it like that. That's Not A Hat have to say it. Um, but That's Not a Hat I purchased a while back. I got introduced to That's Not a Hat from I think it was Grant Lyon possibly at Level Up Retreat last year in 2023 um, and I loved it so much that I picked up my own copy once I saw a copy in stock somewhere and I have played it with so many people uh, at so many different like get togethers and it has just been so so much fun. So That's Not a Hat is a little bit of a memory game, pretty simple. You're going to have some sort of icon in front of you. It's going to be some sort of shape so it might be a bucket, it might be a duck, it might be a chocolate bar. Whatever it is, you have it in front of you, you look at it, you need to remember what it is, and then you place it face down in front of you. Everyone has an item. You're gonna kind of look to see what everyone else has. Everyone places them face down. One person, the first player, takes a second one, looks at that, shows it to everyone, places it down, and then they have to, um, there's arrows on the back of the cards, they have to give that gift, I guess the, the theme of the game is that you're gifting uh, things to people and then re-gifting things, um, so you're going to say, hey, uh, here's a bucket, and then the person that you gave that bucket to has to say, thank you for the bucket, and then the other card that they had first, they will give that gift then to whoever uh, the arrow was pointing to and say, hey, here's a blank, and then that person says, thanks for the blank, pushes something else, and basically you are just trying to remember what everyone has, what everyone is gifting back and forth, but you're just trying to remember what cards were where and where they're being pushed, and at any time, if you ever think that someone gives you something that it's not actually that thing, because a lot of people forget what is being pushed around and they kind of just make up something, um, you can say, that's not a bucket, and then you can flip it over. If it is a bucket, unfortunately, you take that card as a negative for yourself. But if it is not, then the person that gave it to you and got it wrong takes it as a negative point for them. So it's a very fun game. I absolutely love it. And again, I've played this so many times in 2023 and it has just made me laugh so much and everyone in my life laugh so so much and create some great memories so that is why that's not a hat is number two all right so we have finally made it to my number one lighter game of 2023 or lighter game release of 2023 and this game i have become obsessed with uh, very much so recently um, i've played it 
many, many times. I don't even know at this point how many times I've played it. This is another one that is actually available on BGA, and my friend Aiden and I have played so many games of this on BGA. I've also played it a ton in person as well with Aiden and with other people. Um, this is one that I would love to introduce to Francis because I do think that he would enjoy it. So maybe I will see if Francis and his parents want to play this tonight. We'll see. Um, but my number one lighter 2023 release is NAR. NAR. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, but anyways, NAR is published by Pandasaurus Games, which Pandasaurus Games did send this copy to me, so a huge thank you to them. Um, NAR is a fantastic game where it is or feels like such a big game in such a small box. And it's not incredibly difficult. There is more going on than a lot of these other games, um, but it is just one of those games that I continuously come back to time and time again because I want to get better at this game. And I just want to kind of hone in on some sort of strategy for this game. And there's so many different strategies that you can go for in this game, and I think that's why I love it. Because there's so many like paths and you really have to see like and look what things you start with at the beginning of the game and what things are available at the beginning of the game and really structure your strategy with that. And I have just enjoyed this one so, so much. I've gotten a lot better at this one as well. Um, but basically, you are, I think, like steering a Viking ship. You're like a Viking ship captain and you're going to be playing down your like crewmates and those crewmates are going to be getting you different rewards. The cool thing is that you're going to be playing down these Viking cards, which are going to be one of five different colors. Um, and you're going to be playing those down into the colored rows. So if, for example, I had two yellow cards already played, if I played down another yellow card, that would actually allow me to gain rewards from all of the cards that I, the one that I just played, as well as the other ones that I had there. So I could gain victory points, I could gain reputation, so I'd go up on the reputation track, I believe that's what it's called. You can get these like bracelets, which are going to allow you to do a stronger trade action. Um, then you also get these uh, recruitment tokens, I believe, that are allowing you to use them as uh, wild uh, Vikings. So that might not make any sense. But again, this game has quite a lot going on for the uh, size of the box. And uh, yeah, so you're playing down those cards and then eventually you are going to build up this great engine of all of these Viking cards. The more of a color that you play down, the more rewards you're going to gain. Um, eventually, you're going to actually spend those Viking cards in order to um, acquire some of these, I think they're like landmark cards, possibly. They're like the different places that you're going to be sailing your ship to. And then those cards are going to ultimately get you the victory points that you need. And it's also going to create this other tableau of your trade actions. So like I said, you can get these bracelets that you're going to be then spending in order to, I guess, like run that specific engine. So the more landmark cards you have, the more rewards you're going to get based off of the bracelets that you spend for the trade. So those cards you're going to be placing on top of each other, and then each of them are going to have uh, some rewards in three different columns. Um, you can spend one bracelet to get all the rewards in the first column, two bracelets to get the two columns, and then all three bracelets in order to get all three columns. Um, and then, like I said, the more of those landmark cards you have, the stronger all of those columns are going to be. Um, so the stronger that your um, trade action is going to get. So uh, I'm yapping about this game quite a bit, but I have fallen in love with NAR and it is such a fantastic game that I am very addicted to. I will also mention, I think someone told me somewhere that Shem Phillips himself created a solo mode for NAR. This might be totally wrong. I might just be hearing things. I haven't actually looked into it, but if Shem Phillips has created a solo mode for NAR, yo, it's gonna be even higher. Um, but anyways, yeah, NAR is absolutely fantastic. Um, it is ultimately a race as well because the first person to get to 40, I think every other player gets a uh, turn and then whoever has the most points uh, after that is the winner. So 
yeah, that is NAR. That is my number one light 2023 release. All right, friends. So that is going to be everything for today's video. Those are my top 10 plus a few additional games uh, that were lighter that were released in 2023. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. Um, also, a little reminder, comment down below with the word TRIO if you want to be entered in to uh, win a copy of TRIO. A huge thank you again to Happy Camper for uh, offering to do that to give away. It was very nice. Um, but yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile, and I will see you in the next board game video. Bye, friends.